Now it comes time for my least favorite part of AEW pay-per-views, the scrum. We're going to talk about three subjects here. One, Mercedes Monet being asked about her divorce, whether it was fair or foul. Two, Tony Khan's comments about this year to last year. And what we're going to start with is that all of the people who are discussing Brian Danielson's comment about his AEW championship win being the greatest moment of his career or the best moment of his career. Now, I'm not going to use audio for Danielson because, for starters, I couldn't find it. Secondly, it's irrelevant. This guy just wrestled in in front of 50,000 people with both of his children got to be there and watch it. You would have to be some kind of subhuman tribalist to think that this is not the greatest moment of his career. His children were not there for WrestleMania 30. They were there for All In. So it's pretty obvious to anybody who has cares about anything other than wrestling that this is going to be his favorite moment of his career. It's obvious. Please think big. All right, so now let's get into things that are not as cut and dry. Mercedes Monet, she is asked about her divorce. So we're going to talk about that. We're actually going to play the audio because her response and her body language about the situation is interesting and worth discussing on its own. So let's get into it. Uh, Will the audio play? A few weeks ago, uh, you opened up about something serious that you were dealing with personally in your life. Oh God, what are you gonna ask me? Well, so (laughs) people are thinking about whether she's in character or not. I don't think it matters at this point, but it's clear that this guy has stepped on a landmine. He has already gone over the line. I wanted to ask I'm you. I'm not going to date you, okay? Well, uh, I'm married nine years, so thank you. Oh, <laughs> oh the cringe. Woo-wee. This is the power of the cringe. This is terrible. Oh, I appreciate it. Thank you. This is terrible. Oh, this is terrible. But she is, she is in, uh, she's uncomfortable. She's clearly uncomfortable with this line of questioning. She hasn't even gotten the question out yet. But he's clearly, he clearly got her all shaken up. Oh, but I wanted to ask, so you opened up about something serious that you were dealing with personally mm-hmm. in your life. And I wanted to know, what did you learn from that experience? And specifically, what advice would you give to someone that may be going through a separation or divorce why are you gonna tell your wife something you getting ready for something brother so that's the clip um let's let's discuss this for starters whether the question was fair Um, a lot of people think that the question is foul because it's a very personal question i i don't think it was a wrong question I think it was a fair question because she talked about it publicly already. And he was pretty respectful in how he asked the question. Um, he asked the question saying, hey, what did you learn from it? Can you give some advice to fans who might be going through something similar? You know, people who might see her as a role model or something to that effect. And But her nasty attitude pretty much told you that she did not want to talk about it. Um, and there's a lot of people who are saying, why would you ask her such a personal question on this, on this, at this scrum? And that might be, a, you know, an issue is why do you want to talk about something so personal um, in something as public a forum? But this is what happens when you take public questions. You know, people are going to ask you stuff. I saw people saying like, well, isn't this the same as when they asked Triple H about Vince McMahon? Well, no, because WWE is involved with the lawsuit with Vince McMahon. Um, This has nothing to do with wrestling. Her situation has nothing to do with wrestling. But it is almost the equivalent of, you know, when Cody Rhodes is asked about Vince McMahon or when CM Punk is asked about Vince McMahon or, you know, somebody like that who have nothing to do with this. They're performers. They have, you know, Punk was even in the company when this occurred and they were asking him about it. This is a situation that's about her. In her personal life, you know, so I can see how she might take it the wrong way. 
But I think it's a completely legitimate question. I think that Mercedes just has a bad attitude when it comes to fans. And I do think that fans sometimes tend to pry. They get a little too close to the fire. And this was a question that was probably a little too close. It was a little gossipy. But he wasn't asking for any details about the divorce. He was asking about her feelings and what she learned from it. Um, and how she could help other people. Well, this is Mercedes Monet who wants to be a role model and wants to talk about how she helped women's wrestling and all this kind of stuff. Well, this was an opportunity to opine, in a sense, about how marriage and wrestling works out. Because we you know a lot of wrestlers, male wrestlers have gotten divorced because they were never at home, because you know they got too many chair shots to the head, or they got addicted to painkillers, or they had affairs, or whatever the case may be. So this is an interesting situation where it was a female wrestler who was you know, asked about getting divorced. It's, it's not an unfair question to ask her. You know? And since she was the one who went public with it, it's not unfair to ask. You know? And uh, it's not like, you know, she just, somebody figured this out and then she was surprised that this question was com coming up. It's a fair question, as far as I'm concerned, you know? So, let's get into Tony Khan. Tony Khan talks about the differences between AEW last year and AEW this year. I have not listened to this entire clip, so this is all going to be new to me. Let's get into it right now. I'm going to have to start. It was a year ago. This year... It's helped because last year we had literally just launched Collision. I frankly think it's an easier environment backstage at Collision than it was a year ago to do things. I think it's a lot easier flow between the two shows than it was a year ago. I think the locker room is in a much better place than it was a year ago, as evidenced by like when we came up here versus what happened here a year ago. And... And like, and I think it's a much easier job I have dealing because I had to deal with the people on collision last year, and it's a much easier meeting process to put the TV together than it was a year ago at this time too. This year, okay. So um, there was a lot of discussion about you know uh, Tony Khan's response to this question. You know, is it a dig at CM Punk? Well, no, because you know the locker room was going under a lot of stress last year. CM Punk was there. He was basically trying to run the show, but he kept getting into it with various guys backstage. So I would imagine he's just telling the truth. It is easier for him to deal with the roster. More people get along because if you don't get along, they don't even call you to come to work. Ricky Starks ain't been there in months. Miro ain't been there in months. Uh, Malachi Black is there rarely. So it's pretty much just the elite and all those guys and all those people get along. They're all friends. So we're back to all friends wrestling. There's not as, as much, um, not as many people bumping elbows. There's, n there's more of a cohesive vision because everybody thinks the same way about wrestling to a degree. So I think Tony Khan's just being honest about what's going on backstage in AEW. And um, to me, I think it's a fair response. I don't dislike it. Um, him saying that his job is easier, it's like, well, yeah, because there's fewer stressors going on. You know, um, I saw some people, you know, they, they attacked him by saying, you know, his leadership is kind of weak because it sounds like he's blaming other people. It's like, well, yes and no. I mean, we already know Tony Khan's not the strongest leader in the world, but there's a difference between, hey, I got this star player who is bristling up against all my other I guess you could say very important players and it's causing arguments you know there was a fight last year at all out no, I mean all in there's no fight this year so that's automatically better you know so those kinds of things are pretty obvious and I don't think that he what he said was wrong or made him look weak I think he just you know likes that it's it's more calm now whether that translates to good product, you know, we already know it doesn't because Collision is dead. You know, Collision is a, a really dead show. And the locker room is full of boring people like Jack Perry and the Young Bucks, and they always get their way now. But it is what it is. I think I saw somewhere where Tony Khan claimed there was like 27 people involved with the, with the creative. That seems absurd. Um, I didn't see audio on that, so I'm not going to say for sure whether he said that or not because I refuse to watch the whole scrum 
But all I can tell you is this. What Tony Khan said was pretty obvious. Once you get rid of, you know, the people who are, are bumping heads, it becomes easier to deal with. Whether you want to blame CM Punk or not, one of the people bumping heads with the others is gone. And that makes things deal, easier to deal with backstage. Um, I think that these scrums, there's not a lot of information that comes out of them. There's not a lot of things to discuss coming out of these scrums. Um, it does create a situation where people can ask weird questions. Um, I did see that Dave Meltzer asked uh, Brian Danielson's daughter whether she wants a trip to Australia or a trip to Japan, which, you know, even though we know what's going on with Dave Shearer right now and, you know, Brian Last is opening up on him, talking about how he's, a, he's jealous of Meltzer, um, you would think that asking a child you know, hey, would you like to go to Australia because it would be great to drag your daddy on the other side of the world after he just said he's going to retire for you. That, oh, well, if, if the babies are okay with taking a trip to Australia, then maybe Danielson will wrestle. That is, you know, a robot lacking in emotion and trying to, maybe he was joking. I didn't, again, I didn't hear the question. So maybe he said it in a joking manner, but it, it's, it's a weird question to ask a little girl. And it's manipulative because it's like, well, if she's okay with going to Tokyo, maybe you ought to just do wrestling in Japan then, Brian. If she's okay with going to Australia, maybe you should just wrestle in Australia, Brian. It's very manipulative and it's bullshit. And it is the kind of robotic subhuman stuff that uh, Dave Shearer accused him of. You know, the guy said he's retiring. Let him retire. Don't be... Don't be manipulating him through his children, you know? I think that was tacky. But then again, I don't know the context because I didn't, I didn't watch the clip. So these scrums don't really do any favors, but they insist on having them. So whatever. But let me know what you guys think. What did you guys think of all these questions and the answers? And I'll talk to you guys later. No one doesn't believe.